Hey there, thank you so much for joining me to talk about making video and remote, remote sessions accessible to people with disabilities. I will also talk about some other new resources from the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative, AI, which I'll pronounce this way. I wanna start out by playing a little, a couple of clips from a video to illustrate some of the points that I'm going to make uh, during this session. So it's a BBC video. There's a couple things you need to know that you might not, depending on where you live in the world and how old you are. A BlackBerry is a personal digital assistant, so electronic device, uh, preceded smartphones. And orange is a network for mobile, et cetera. So I'm gonna play two clips from this video. And the first one, you're going to be blind, so you can hear it but not see it. And the second one, you will be deaf, so you can see it, but not hear it. All right, let's see how that goes. I bought something from you last week, and I'm very disappointed. Oh yeah, what's the problem? Yeah, well, my Blackberry is not working. <laughs> Why is that so funny? <clears throat> What's about it? Run out of juice? <laughs> no, no, it's completely frozen. All right, I don't get why that's so funny. Oh, yeah, I can see it's that. Annoying. Ah, okay, in this next clip from the same video, I'm going to mute the sound and we'll uh, see how that goes. So I'll, uh, everyone's laughing. Why is everyone? <laughs> Even the actors are having trouble not laughing. Why is everyone laughing? It doesn't look funny at all. Yeah, without captions, I don't get it. Okay, so that's to illustrate this. We're missing the point of this video if we can't see it or can't hear it. Um, it is very clever though, so I'll let you uh, listen to the, the rest of it and think about the importance of the visual description and being able to get the audio information. So the visual description of this is, it's in a fruit and vegetable shop, all right? And there are no electronics. So it's actual fruit, like the orange is a piece of citrus, okay? And he talks about a date, which is a, I think they're fruit, a date, um, which he puts into his diary, which is actually a um, paper calendar. And then at the end, there is an egg carton with the cost written on the top. All right, so there's your visual description going in. I bought something from you last week and I'm very disappointed. Oh yeah, what's the problem? Yeah, well, my Blackberry is not working. <laughs> What's about it? Run out of juice? <laughs> no, no, it's completely frozen. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see that. I'll tell you what, let's try it on orange. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a few black spots, you see. Oh, dear, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> well, how I knew to get my Blackberry working. Well, it could be an application issue. Well, where do you store that BlackBerry? Well, it's on my desktop. Well, you could try using a mouse to drag the BlackBerry to the trash. <laughs> then after you've done that, you might want to launch the BlackBerry from the desktop. <laughs> well, I've already tried that a few times. I mean, all it did was mess up Windows. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it might be worth waiting a couple of weeks. They got the latest BlackBerrys coming in then. Well, could you give me a date? Certainly. <laughs> Let me put that date in my diary. <laughs> Anything else I can help you with? Yes, yes, I've also got a problem, to be honest, with my apple. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, that is an old apple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did you buy that? It, last week. Last week? Oh, they brought out two new apples since then. <laughs> What's the problem with it? Well, I've tried to put my dongle in it, and <laughs> it won't fit. Oh, yeah. This is the part we missed about half the And how big's your dongle? Well, 
I don't know much about these things, but my wife's seen a few dongles in her time. <laughs> and she says a little bit on the small side. <laughs> well, I'm afraid there's not a lot I can do about that. <laughs> Tell you what, let me try booting it. He kicks it. <laughs> no, it's crashed. Anything else I can help you with? Well, funnily enough, yes. My grandson's birthday soon, you oh, see. Yeah. Now, he's already got an apple and a blackberry. I mean, have you got anything else that you might just like? Well, we're doing a special offer on these. I mean, I can't make head or tail of them, but the kids seem to like them. Oh, Eggs yeah. box. <laughs> 360. That's the egg carton. All right. So that was just for fun. But you see how important it is to be able to get both the visual information and the auditory information. Otherwise, this video doesn't make sense. And that's even more important when we're talking about things like training video videos and education and other important information. So that's what we're gonna talk about next. We're gonna talk about making our media and, set and remote sessions work with people with all types of disabilities, including motor or physical, visual, cognitive or learning, hearing, speech, all different kinds of impairments as well as multiple impairments, the same person having different issues. I'm also gonna talk a little bit, mention um, WCAG. It's the standard we develop, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. Now that standard does include um, requirements for media. Um, and we have a separate resource that presents it in a different way and goes into more detail. And that resource is called Making Audio and Video Media Accessible. It's kind of a tutorial for how to do that. Now that resource includes all of the WCAG requirements as well as best practices for optimum accessibility that go beyond some of the minimums of WCAG. You can find that, excuse me, that resource on the WAY website. The address is w3.org slash WAI slash media slash AV for audio video. Or from anywhere on the way website in the main navigation, the third item is design and develop. And then in the secondary navigation, the fourth link is audio and video media. And that will get you to this resource that I'm gonna talk about next on making audio and video media accessible. So this covers several things that you would expect. It covers captions, um, some titles. It gives you a good example of why automatic machine generated captions are not sufficient. So go look up that example. It talks about transcripts, including descriptive transcripts, which include both the audio information and the video visual information, to, which is essential for people who are deaf and blind to be able to get the information from your video. Um, it talks about interactive transcripts. It talks more about the description of visual information and about sign languages. And I'll talk about description of visual information a little bit more later. Now, before this resource gets into those nitty gritties, it has three sections even ahead of that. So that are uh, foundational for understanding this. What do you think those sections are? What do you need to know before you jump, in, jump into the details? Well, whether you're focusing on meeting WCAG and being accessible for media or anything else, we strongly believe the first thing you need to do is understand how people with disabilities use the technology. Because if you don't understand that, you won't be able to implement things well and provide a good accessible user experience. So that's the first page of our resource. It talks about understanding the user needs and the user experiences of people with disabilities. It also provides examples of how what we do to make our media accessible um, makes it more used by people with and without disabilities. So that's a good uh, illustration of our tagline, essential for some people with disabilities and useful for all people in different situations. There's also a section on the benefits to organizations that covers things like SEO, search engine optimization. 
a little uh, side note, if you are looking for examples for a business case or, or such of how what we do for accessibility benefits others and organizations, um, I encourage you to take a look at this page and that, that list. I think that's very compelling, very compelling. All right, the next page in this resource is on planning and managing uh, accessibility for your media. And it gives you some guidance on whether you're developing all of it in-house or whether you're outsourcing it, or whether you're trying to decide whether to, what to do in-house and what to outsource. So that's planning and managing. The last link in this section is to a page on media player accessibility. Now there's still one I haven't mentioned. <laughs> Any idea? This is one that I think gets uh, forgotten a lot when we talk about accessibility. Um, I think we focused on accessibility of media retrofitting um, and this helps us focus on early on in the process. So this is the on the audio and video content itself, the content. And what are the accessibility considerations that you need to do from the beginning? So when you're planning, when you're scripting, when you're storyboarding, and later when you're recording and producing, what do you need to think about? And I'm gonna stress that as we go through. So some examples that this page helps address, um, common barriers that we see in, in videos is missing description of visual information for people who can't see the video. And that includes things like the title text at the beginning of the video. Um, I said all the text that was in there. Uh, it includes like if you have links or email addresses at the end, you notice I read out all the links. It includes speakers names and text. If you have like you're doing interviews or whatever and you put in text on the video, the person's name and their title or whatever, you need to make sure that that information is available. Um, any text in a presentation. Uh, you don't have to read it out exactly. You just have to make sure that you're conveying the key information. And I'm demonstrating that as we go. Another common barrier is requiring sight or hearing to understand the actual content of the video. So if your video has something like, uh, attach the small ring to the green end. Yeah, well, what if people can't see green or if they're colorblind? Um, so you could fix that of doing, of adding something like attach the small ring to the green end, which is the larger end. Okay, now I know. Other common barriers are making the text that you have in the video hard for some people to see. Um, people who can see maybe have low vision because of insuff insufficient contrast or just tiny text. So those are some of the common barriers that we want to avoid and this page helps. There's six points um, under audio and five points under video. And each one of them is shown whether it directly relates to a WCAG requirement at level A, double A, or triple A, or if it's something that goes beyond minimum requirements. Take a look at that page. Um, I think if we were all thinking about this when we were uh, doing videos, it would really increase the accessibility uh, quite a bit. So from the first page of the main resource, it's the third link, audio content and video content. <clears throat> okay, I've got a graph that shows uh, something we're all familiar with in a software development lifecycle or website or web app or where, um, is the cost to make a change. And that is, if you have to make a change early on in requirements or analysis, it's not going to cost that much. But the later you go into coding or testing or production, then those changes later are much more expensive. And with accessibility in general, I think this is a steeper curve. And especially when we're talking about media, we're talking about video or audio. Because if we don't do those things that we uh, cover in that, that content page, you could end up in a situation where retrofitting to make the video accessible is either gonna be really awkward or maybe not even feasible and you may have to redo it. <laughs> so this is why it's really important that we get this done, that we, we, we understand what we need to do from the beginning. An illustration of this, I have a picture of a house with stairs along the side of the yard. And to make that accessible, 
they had to add this really ugly steel ramp that goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and, back and, forth and takes up the entire front yard. So we want to avoid that. We want our accessibility to, accessibility to be smooth and beautiful, right? In order to do that, we really need to start from the beginning when we're planning, when we're scripting, when we're storyboarding and make sure we're getting that done up front, the issues that we need to. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of um, visual description or description of visual information or audio description, it's called different things. Um, basically, uh, there's a, a training video that, uh, and I'm going to play just, so in the first version of this, um, you are blind, so you can't see it, but you can hear it. And let's see how that goes. For now, let's do an activity to illustrate that. This is a quiz to see what you think. I have two pages here, and I'm going to ask you a question about them. Here is version one. Look at it carefully. Now, here is version two. What do you notice about it? How is it different? Both pages have the exact same text content. That is, they have the same words. They even have the same font family, but they look very different. Now, the question for your quiz. If you have a person with significant low vision, which would they be able to read better? Which would be easiest for them to read? Would they be able to read this one better? Or would they be able to read this one better? You probably said this one. Well, not necessarily. All right, how'd you do on that quiz? Who picked the first one? Who picked the second one? <laughs> yeah, don't know at all. All right, so that was made up. Um, if you had to, though, add description to this existing training, I have a graphic of someone pulling their hair out. It'd be a lot of work and it'd be awkward because you'd have to keep pausing to explain every time the trainer says this one or this one, which one it is, right? So we want to avoid that. And you can, if you think about it ahead of time, you can do something that's called integrated description. And that is where the description is just included in the script. It's just the way it's done. And so it's smoothly incorporated in the training. So next, I'll show you the real training <laughs> that uh, scenario comes from. Well, let's do an activity to illustrate that. I have two pages here. <clears throat> Version one is 11 point text with 1.15 line spacing. And the par paragraph width is about 40 characters. It takes up about 10% of a sheet of paper. So just a little bit. Version two is large print. It's about 26 point type, um, double line spacing, also has a width of about 40 characters, but because the text is so large, the exact same text, the same content, takes up the entire page. So my question to you is, if you have a person with a significant low vision, which would they be able to read better? Version one with a small print, or version two with the large print? You probably said version two. Well, not necessarily. All right, so there's an example of integrated description. Um, you understood, even if you didn't see exactly what was you needed to about this in information, and it was just smoothly integrated. So we don't have to go back and do separate description files. Now, if you wanna know the rest of the story of this training video, not necessarily, um, you can find it in the in, in our the media resource. It is linked as an example of integrated description. All right, so integrated description works really well for training videos like that. But what if you have a story, right? It's a, a film, a story. Uh, yeah, you, it, an integrated description isn't going to work. You're not going to have the character saying, you know, I banged on the door, <laughs> right? Um, so instead, you'll probably be adding a uh, description separately, maybe as an audio file. Um, and if there's enough pauses in the main sound, like the dialogue, and you don't need much description, you can just uh, integrate it in the pauses. Like in the video example we started with from the BBC, I was doing some of that, just adding some visual description uh, as we went. But sometimes that won't work. 
um, sometimes there's just not a lot of time. The dialogue keeps going, going, going. There's no break. You need to describe something. It's important to understand the story. So what do you do then? Well, if you haven't thought about it ahead of time, then a lot of times what people will end up doing is pause the action in the video, add the audio description, restart the action, pause description, restart, pause description. And it's just not very smooth. It's not very smooth. Sometimes you can do something really cool instead. You can film extra time in the spaces, right? So we have an example of um, one of our perspectives videos. By the way, if you haven't seen those, I encourage you to go look for the way perspectives videos um, and take a look at those. And there are some linked from our media resource. What we did is we filmed extra time in the scenes so that we could keep the video going and integrate the, the have the description um, as within the nice flow of the video. So for the version of the video without description, like one of those scenes is three seconds, okay? Um, but then the same scene in the video with description is seven seconds. So that's really cool. And if you wanna see an example of that, again, it's in the media resource. Okay, so here's the things to get started. You probably know about captions and transcripts and sign language, um, but this will give you more information on media players, on understanding the user experience, and really importantly, what you need to do up front for description and for other things to make sure you can have a smooth, accessible user experience with your audio and video. Again, you can find that on the WAY website at w3.org slash WAY slash media slash AV. We also have a related resource. If you're doing something like this, it's a presentation. You probably wanna take a look also at the resource called how to make your presentations accessible to all. And that covers um, like meetings and training and other types of presentations. It includes broad things like making the venue, making sure the venue is accessible, um, considering accessibility when you're scheduling sessions, but it also has some specific things for presenters. So the sections there you wanna particularly look at are preparing slides and projected material, and then during the presentation. So that has some additional information for you. You can find that from the WAY website in the main navigation, um, the, Link is teach and advocate. And then it's the first main link under there, make presentations accessible. And this was originally designed a few years ago um, for live sessions. Um, a lot of it does apply to remote and we're in the process of, of updating it to um, cover more about remote. And then we may make that interactive so you can select what you want and get specific information. So hopefully this answered some of your questions about making me video and remote sessions accessible. Um, maybe it uh, introduced new questions and you know now where to go find answers in the media resource and in making presentations accessible. Now, if we were in person and I could see you, I would ask how many people knew about those two resources before today? And I would guess um, that some did not. And that's one of the things that I'd like your help with is telling people about these resources. We have a lot of cool stuff on the WAY website that people don't even know about. Um, and I wanna just highlight a few just to show you the breadth of information you can find on the WAY website to answer your questions. I need to convince my boss to give me time to make my web app accessible. So we have a business case for digital accessibility. We had an old version years ago, and then we updated that to be a totally different approach. So take a look at that. I have been tasked with developing an accessibility course for our in-house team. We have several different training resources. And about a year and a half ago, we started working on a curricula. So we actually have a, a detailed curricula to help you develop your own course, tell you what to uh, suggestions on what to include, learning objectives, things like that. Right now we have several foundation modules 
and we're about to publish the de developer modules and we're working on designer mo modules. So there's something that's already there and that you can watch or contribute to um, as we continue to develop that. We are redesigning our investment services website. Our customers are mostly retirement age. So we are looking for guidance on how to make our website easy to use by older people. We have a resource for that. So we have uh, several actually related to design for older users, um, including a resource that says, these are the particular WCAG techniques to focus on to make your site uh, more usable by older users. I have a user experience background and I want to include people with disabilities in our design process. I need help convincing my department head to let us do it. And I could use some tips. Again, this is something that we feel very strongly about. We have a resource called Involving Users for Better, Easier Accessibility. And it starts out with just some of the um, benefits of involving users early and throughout the process um, in user-centered design, other user experience te techniques. And then we also have a, a, another page of that set is specifically on evaluating accessibility with people with disabilities, including usability testing and things like that. The follow up European lab will have the post on accessibility statement. We could use the pattern for accessibility statement. We can help you create an accessibility statement. We have a resource that explains some of the sections and background behind an accessibility statement. Um, it has an example, like a short one and a long one, and then it actually has a generator. So you just put in your information and then it will generate an accessibility statement for you that you can use as is or, or edit further. Howdy, I need to write a report on website accessibility. If you haven't looked at our introduction to web accessibility recently, I'd encourage you to take a look at that. Um, we rewrote it a little while ago to really uh, communicate a different approach that um, accessibility is about enabling people with impairments and avoiding creating disabilities, creating barriers that, that the web technologies are meant to be accessible and if you're doing things right, you're, you're accessible. Um, and if you're not, you're keeping people from using your stuff. So take a look at that. I need help. I need help. I need help. We can help you. So these are just an example of the things that we have. You know, some, often we get a question and we're like, hey, we have a resource for that. So I'd encourage you to take a look and see what resources we have on the Way website that you find helpful or that you think other people might find helpful and then share those with them. Um, probably you can just skim around the whole site, but maybe the easiest way is to look through the Way resources page. So that lists all the main resources with a little, little description. Um, and that's available from w3.org slash WAI slash resources. We also have a free online course. Um, about a year ago, we launched that. And it's uh, the free course on digital accessibility foundations, currently called Intro to Web Accessibility. And it has five different modules. Of course, it talks about understanding how people with disabilities use the web, it has a module on business case, planning and managing, and on like going through the WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. So take a look at the free online course. And again, tell, tell other people about it, if you would. Um, we expect to uh, have that available long-term and hopefully later this year, do an update along with WCAG 2.2. How can I get notified of new way resources? We, again, relatively recently, we started a way announce list so if you were previously on the interest group list and you said, this is too much, we started it for those people who just want to get announcements um, and not a lot of other things. So there's only like a couple messages per month um, for me. So yeah, and, and other staff and uh, anyway, 
So I encourage you to sign up for the Way Announce list. You can also subscri subscribe to, to our Twitter feed. Um, if you want to do that, so from the Way homepage, the news section, and there's a link to subscribe. This is good stuff. How can I help? We'd love for you to help. And that's what W3C is bringing people together to help. We want input from people with disabilities, from people in organizations, from government, from around the world with different perspectives. So we encourage you, if you um, have comments on existing resources, the resources on the WAY website near the bottom, there's a box, help improve this page. Um, there's a link to an email address and also even GitHub. So you can fork and edit and, and do a pull request with your suggestions for existing document. If it's one of the standards documents, then um, near the top is the section status of this document, and that includes how you can comment. If you might be interested in more actively participating in these resources, um, take a look at our information about participating in WAY. Think about if you uh, are able to make the time commitment and, and uh, are inclined to, to do that type of work. But we really, really want your help. Ah, right, I was filming her dad and she wanted to be, uh, she wanted me to film her too. So I taught her how to say the word accessible. I want to make the web accessible. All right, we want you to too. Uh, we want to include it in education for kids that age. And, and, you know, as soon as they're learning about all this stuff to learn about accessibility. So we have a lot of resources on the WAY website to help you make the web accessible. And we encourage you to take a look at those. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about making videos and remote sessions accessible to people with disabilities. I hope you learned some things and I really hope that you'll go to the WAY website to find out even more and help us share this information so others can too. Thanks so much.